So, good afternoon. I am uh, Usman Alvarez and uh, we'll talk a bit about the speed recognition, but uh, from the point of view of the market or the business or on the products, how they have evolved and uh, how they are nowadays, sort of history and uh, the current situation. So, first, uh, what Katri already thought about this, so I won't explain anything. But it was the first recognition in 1952 in the Bell Laboratories, which was very basic, but very accurate. Then uh, there was, uh, uh, during the 50s and 60s, there was quite a lot of research. And uh, in 72, uh, there was the first commercial product, which was this uh, VIP 100 from Threshold Technology. And uh, it uh, had a dedicated hardware uh, and user chosen vocabulary. So you chose, I don't know how many words, but I would guess not so many. And then you trained it 10 times a word. And then you, and then when you spoke, it basically, well, that was a, the flow chart, but basically compares to the trained matrices. And uh, it got uh, quite nice uh, accuracy also if you used uh, 35 watts in a noisy environment, uh, it was 95, 98.5% accurate and quite fast speech also. But anyway, this, this didn't uh, have a big commercial success. This was not important because the business they made, but because it encouraged this uh, this program called SUR, so Speech Understanding Research from the ARPA or DARPA, which is Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency from the US. So they put a lot of money in speech uh, recognition research, and we were quite well, these institutions were mainly involved in it. So the CMU is the current. Carnegie Mellon University, then there's the BBN, Bolt, Peranik, and Newman, which is a research company. And then the System Development Com Corporation, together with the Stanford Research Institute. And there was, again, a lot of innovation, so uh, uh, advance in the field, and there was uh, quite uh, these systems from each of the institutions who and each system like, introduced a different, not breakthrough, but advancement. Or, uh, yeah. But anyways, uh, this was not for commercial purposes, of course. At the same time, there was uh, private uh, research, mainly from AT&T, Bell Laboratories and IBM. And they had actually two very different uh, approaches to, to it. In AT&T, they were looking for a... a recognizer for a, a large-scale application, uh, so for their telephone network, for automating the call, call routing, voice dialing, etc. So it needed a small vocabulary, but uh, it should be speaker independent and uh, very robust. And uh, one uh, nice thing they introduced was the keywords. So if the system was expecting an answer, it didn't matter if you say it said a uh, long sentence or, or just uh, the one word it was expecting, so it would recognize anyway. And then the IBM approach was uh, totally opposite. They wanted to kind of replace the, uh, the typewriter, so they wanted to people to be able to write using the voice only. So, of course, ex extensive vocabulary and training were required. And uh, as Katri said, uh, they kind of invented or put into use this uh, language models. And again, the, the, there was no, no big commercial uh, success in this, but uh, rather they settled ground, the grounds for further development. Excuse me, can I ask on the fly, so what were the year, years about? This was in the 70s as well. 70s, so, uh, in parallel to the DARPA yeah, okay. program. And uh, then actually, 
Now I will talk about Dragon. This I will talk quite a lot about this because I think it's very important to the history of speech recognition. These uh, two persons, they were uh, Jonathan and uh, James Baker, and they were uh, they met while well, they were a couple, and they met in the uh, Rockefeller University when they were undergraduate students. They were uh, both interested in uh, in uh, speech recognition. Then. Uh, they graduated and they started a PhD at the Rockefeller University. But they didn't have the resources and they, they were not comf comfortable there. So they moved to the CMU, so the Carnegie Mellon University, where this uh, DARPA, uh, yeah, DARPA school program was going on. So there uh, they really yeah, were in the right place, let's say. And there is uh, where they uh, developed this uh, Dragon uh, system first recognizer. And there's uh, citations here from the guy from the MIT saying that Jim was the first person to realize that such hidden mark of models might be used to untangle the speech riddle. So, uh, well, Kate explained that uh, they were actually put into use uh, or studied before, but uh, this guy was the first to actually put them in a product or in a system. And uh, yeah, the peculiarity of the Dragon system was that uh, it used extensively these HMMs. And there was no numbers about the accuracy, but uh, they said in a report that uh, all the, from nine sentences, uh, all the words were correct. So I guess that's a good thing. But yeah, stick with this. Uh, they then graduated from the university, from the CMU, went to IBM to continue research on speech recognition. Then they, there they uh, contributed to, to build this uh, recognizer uh, with a vocabulary of 1,000 words, and which was able to actually recognize continuous speech. But it took, took it uh, one hour, around one hour, to recognize one single sentence. So uh, it was not very user-friendly, friendly, I say. So uh, the thing is that the Jim and Janet, they wanted to, not to only research, but to like release products, to sell products. And they, they, in the IBM, they were only researching. So they actually went away and went to work for Verbex. And uh, Verbex, uh, that was a small company. They were selling a, a recognizer of uh, digits over the phone line. And uh, they went to improve and uh, just until they reached the, the target of continuous speech recognition, which I forgot by the way, but uh, when they got married, they, they, I'd say they, they set their goal for themselves to be able to make this system that, uh, rec so to, make it, to be able to make uh, continuous speech recognition available for everybody, like for a consumer level market. So, yeah, they were working in Verbex, and then uh, Verbex stopped working uh, with speech recognition, and they, um, these guys were, uh, they didn't want to go to research and they had no, no, nowhere to, to work. So they took the risk and uh, founded their own company called Dragon Systems in the 82. And during the first two years, they uh, just released a discrete uh, recognition product. So those in which you have to pause every minute after each word. And uh, that was mainly for, uh, let's say, uh, individual customers, so uh, they made uh, custom products, not for the general public. And in uh, 84, they made the first, first important deal with, with, was with these uh, apricot computers uh, uh, company uh, from the UK, and uh, you can see the advertisement of the company. Uh, they were, they claimed they were the new Apple, so, but uh, in the end, that, that didn't happen. <laughs> so, they, but, they were actually selling the first computer uh, in the uh, personal computer in the world with uh, speech recognition and, uh, and uh, that cost uh, 2,000 pounds. And this was basically the thing. <laughs> and um, yeah, and uh, the speech uh, engine was provided by by Dragon, and uh, it had uh, 4,000 4, words vocabulary. And well, yeah, they then uh, they released uh, more products uh, for the general market. Uh, 
that I don't dictate for the PC, power supply for the Mac. And this had huge vocabulary, it had 30,000 30, uh, words vocabulary thing. But even though they, they had this uh, nice, this is from the web page from 96, nice reviews from, uh, from you know, specialized publications, but they still didn't get into the, into the, um, the general acceptation of the speech recognition. So the people didn't, wasn't interested because they had to pause every word and that, that's uncomfortable and natural. So they wanted to change and um, they, uh, well, actually you probably remember this one from uh, Alexander Mackie. And they, what they did in 94 is they, they predicted, uh, yeah, that in a few years the computing power available for the general public computers would allow for a continuous speech integration, uh, recognition. So in 1994, they, um, they restructured the company. They got some cash from hard drive manufacturers who bought 25% of the company, and then they had uh, uh, new teams of people. Actually, the engineering team had 50 people, which was the biggest team for uh, researching speech, speech recognition in the world at the time. Actually, they they made it when they, um, in 97 they released this uh, natural speaking product after 26 years since they got married. So it was their their dream, let's say. And it was huge success. And there's two minute video from the uh, release from a press review we can watch. <laughs> 